Hello, I am Victor Paredes, I am the product manager of Moho and I want to show you how to create liquid shapes. So first I wanted to show you this example because this is uh, some fire that is using liquid shapes. And the first thing we need to learn is that when uh, to create a liquid shape we need shapes. So we need a vector layer and I will just create one circle here and maybe another more orange circle here. All right, so we have two shapes and if I use the select shape tool and I select the first one, you can see these new options here. These are the liquid shape options. So currently this shape is normal. All right, so that means it's not being combined with any other shape. All right, and if I select the second one, you can see it is also normal, but I can combine it with the previous shape. So basically all the time you have a normal shape at the bottom and then the shapes that are on top of that normal shape can 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 have the liquid shapes on options applied to them. So if I select this shape and I click on add here, now you can see these two shapes are combined now. They are part of the same liquid shape and you can see they are connected. I can still move this shape, but they keep the connection there. So if I hide the curves, you can see how the shape is working here. So that is adding uh, I can select this shape again. Let me just show the curves again. And I can subtract also. So now it's the same, but this shape is, sub is subtracting from the base shape. So let me just unselect everything so you can see it. So I will just select this and you can see it is subtracting. And we also have the option to intersect shapes. Okay. So this is similar to masking. It's not exactly the same and there are some limitations you need to consider. But some, for some cases, um, it works very similarly to masking. So you could use it to create pupils, for instance, for, for the eyes. Now, if we go back uh, and select the shape again, and I, I will set add here, we also have a blending value. So if I increase this blending value, you can see that now the, the shape is uh, blending with the, the base one and it, it is creating like this kind of liquid effect all right so how big that liquid effect is going to be it depends on that blending value and this blending value just so you know can also be animated so if i go to any frame different than zero you know we are building everything on frame zero but if i go to any other frame now i am actually animating so i can animate this blending value so it can go from 46 to zero and then to I don't know 100 so you can animate that too and at the same time you can animate the shape itself so you could move it like that and now the blending value is also changing there all right now let me just remove those keyframes I will just select them and press delete on the keyboard so the blending value can be applied to a shape that is adding to the other to a shape that is subtracting. So you can see here it is subtracting with a blending value too. So it looks a bit like it is pushing the, the shape, but it, it is the actually the blending mode, sorry, the blending value being applied there. Uh, and now if you intersect, you don't have any blending value because there is no blending for intersection. They are just intersecting. Okay. So let me just go back to add. So again, the base layer is always normal. And the layers, sorry, the base shape is always normal and the shapes you put on top are all always, uh, they, they can add, subtract or uh, intersect. So now I can add a third shape. Let me just create another shape. Maybe it will be this color. So you can see I added that third shape and this shape by default is normal, but I can change it to add. So now it will be added to the blending, uh, to the liquid shape. I can subtract or I can in intersect. So now it is intersecting across the entire liquid shape. Okay. Now something you need to consider is that if I add, for instance, you see this shape by default has a blending percentage of zero. So that means if I move this, you can see that the, the connection between the shapes is always sharp. It is not soft. All right. But if I move this other shape, which has a blending value applied you can see it is soft with the with the shape that is under it but not what with the shape that is in on top so basically what i'm i'm trying to say here is that the shape on top 
will define the blending value. So if the blending value is zero, Moho will use the, the blending value of the, of the shape under it. And if the blending value changes on the shape on top, it will affect the entire shape. All right, so now the Moho prioritize this blending value over the rest. So now this is the blending value that is being affecting everything. Okay, so it's very important to know which shape is on top. And if you want to know, actually, you can just select one shape. And we have two, two buttons here. We have the select bottom shape. So this will select the, the, the bottom of the shape, which is like the, the main shape of the liquid shape. And this button will select the top shape. So here you can animate the blending value on the top. All right, if I set all these shapes to normal, you can see this is actually uh, the, these are actually the shapes that are inside of Moho. So now I can do some other stuff. So for instance, I can set this shape to subtract, okay, with some blending, and now I can set this shape to add. All right. So now I have something weird happening here that is this shape is subtracting from the shape of the uh, at the bottom, but not from the shape at the top. So you can create some nice effects there too. All right, so it will depend of, on the order. If you want to change the order of the shapes, I can select this shape and I can click on um, on the arrows on the keyboard. So if I go up, it will be on top. So that means it will remove from the entire shape. And if I go back, uh, if I go down, it will be removing only at the bottom. And if I go down again, it won't be actually part of the liquid shape anymore because it, it is under the main layer, the main normal layer. Right, so I will just move it back to be in the middle here. Now, in one li liquid shape, uh, sorry, in one layer, you can have several liquid shapes, and they they behave as as groups. So in this case, this is a liquid shape made of three shapes. So I, I just showed to you there are three shapes here, and they are being combined in different ways. If I create another shape here, let's say it, this one is going to be green. If I create this green shape here. You can see this green shape is not interacting with the rest of the shape because this is a normal shape and I have two options. I can add, subtract or, or intersect this with the, with the previous liquid shape or I can create a new shape. Let me just paint this new shape, um, I don't know, this color. I will create a new shape here and I can select this new shape and add it to the previous one. So this new shape is going to be added to the normal shape that is under it, all right? So now I have two liquid groups. I have this green one and this blue one, all right? And they don't interact with each other because they are part of different groups, all right? So now this one can have a blending mode. I can create another shape and maybe subtract from it with some blending value here. So I basically have two liquid shapes operating here. So uh, one one nice thing that you can do, for instance, is that, I don't know, let's suppose you, you are animating something like a fire, so you have some circles going up, something like that. Imagine you are animating this, but you also want to have some circles or some other shapes. I'm just using circles here, but you also want to have some some parts of the shape appearing. So maybe at some point, uh, there will be little parts of the of the fire that goes uh, that go up and then disappear. So you can have those too. So you can have the overall shape um, subtracting, but then you can have another one adding. All right. And then if I add another one on top, and I subtract with this one, I could make this one too also subtract all that. So anyway, you can create like very complex. Uh, shapes and have different ways to work with this okay so it's very very flexible you just need to be creative in the way you apply it so now if we look at the fire again you can see that the fire is actually done with one drop uh, it, this shape is just let me show you here it's just a drop and then we have some stars here that are subtracting from that so let me try to recreate that. So I will just create a new file here and let's, uh, I will draw a circle again and we're going to create a blue fire in this case. So let me just create some kind of drop here. Okay, that. 
and now I'm going to create some stars so I'm, I'm just going to use the star tool here and maybe it's going to be a bit bigger here all right and there and I will set this star to subtract with a high blending value so basically what I want to do later is to rotate this star to give that sensation of the fire moving all right so I have this star and now I will simply copy and paste this and put it at the other side of the shape so maybe now this star is going to be around here okay and now I will copy and paste the star again and maybe in this case it is going to be around here and then copy and paste and in this case it's going to be um, let's say here all right now I want to animate this but I don't want to animate the points all the time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig this liquid shape because this is just a vector layer that you can rig normally so what I'm going to do is to create a new bone layer please remember we are doing all this on frame zero because we are building our character or our effect so I will create a bone layer and put the layer with the liquid shapes inside of the bone layer and now actually to create the bones I want to see the shapes because right now if I select the bone layer I don't see the the liquid shapes anymore I don't see the points so but if I select this you can see the vectors here so what I'm going to do is to right click this layer go to quick settings and select show paths here so when I do that even if I select the bone layer I can still see the vectors and the points of this layer all right so with this i'm going to use the add bone tool and i will add one bone for the main shape all right and now i'm going to create new bones for the stars so i don't want the new bones to be child of the of the main bone so i will press escape to unselect this bone and now i will create one bone here press escape again because i don't want the, the next bone to be a child of this one so escape a new one here, escape, a new one here, escape, a new one here. All right. So now I have my bones and now I need to bind the points to the bones because currently the bones are moving all the shapes. All right. So they are influencing different shapes here. So what we want to do is to bind specific points to specific bones. So in order to do that, I can select the vector layer and I can go to the bind points tool, which is here. Okay, and with this tool, I can simply Alt and click over the bone. And now I, I just released Alt on the keyboard. And now I can select the points I want to bind to this bone. So in this case, I want to bind the points of the of this drop, the main, the main shape. So I have several options. I can select the points and hold Shift and just select each one of the points. So that is one option. Or I can select only one point and since the rest of the points are, are connected I can press ALT on the keyboard so that will select the connected points or I can simply again since these points are selected I can simply click on the line of this shape and that will select everything every point related to that line so once I have those points selected I can just bind the points here and you can see now the points they, they share the color with the bone so that means they are bound to it all right so i will do the same with the star so i will hold alt on the keyboard click on this bone so you can see it is red now and now i will simply click on the star here and press bind points alt and click here click on the line bind alt click on the line bind alt and click click on the line bind so now everything is bound to each bone all right so now if I go back to the bone layer now I can animate that so now if I rotate this bone you can see it looks a bit, little bit like fire moving there so if I move all the rest of the bones and if I move them all together it should look a little bit like fire not exactly that but it should look like that but I am very lazy and I don't want to animate four bones I just want to animate one bone so what I'm going to do is I will select this bone let's say this is my main bone my main star so I will call this bone the, na the, the default name is B2 but I will call it main star alright so this bone has that name now so now I will select with shift I will select all these other three bones and with the selection bone tool I have the bone constraints 
window here, so I will open it. And here we have the control bones. And with the control bones, I can tell the software, okay, I want these bones to move exactly in the way this other bone is moving, all right? So I will do that for the angle. So I will tell all these three bones to follow the angle of main star. And here you can set up uh, the percentage. So for instance, this one is at 100%. So that means if the main bone, of the main star bone rotates 90 degrees, all the bones are going to rotate 90 degrees. If I set this to 50%, if this bone rotates 90 degrees, all the other bones are going to rotate 45 degrees because they are moving at half of the amount of, of movement the other bone has. All right, so I will just leave it at 100%. And then we have the delay, and the delay uh, is the number of frames. If I want this movement to happen later or sooner even, I can rotate this bone, and, and if I set, for instance, the delay to be 4, then these bones are going to start moving 4 frames after the main one, all right? But in this case, I want to keep the angle at 100% to follow the main star and without any delays, all right? So I will close this. And now if I go to any frame different than zero, I will just press escape to unselect the bones and now I can rotate this bone and you can see that when I rotate this bone, everything moves, okay? And it's working nicely in a way, but I have a problem. I like how the, the stars at the right are rotating. They are rotating in the right direction, but if you look at the stars at the left, they are rota rotating in the opposite direction. I mean, they, they are not rotating correctly. They should rotate like that, okay? So basically what I need to do is to select these two bones of these two stars, go again to the bone constraints, and instead of telling it to rotate in 100%, I will tell it to rotate in negative 100%. So they are going to rotate in the opposite direction. They will still follow this, this uh, bone, but in the opposite direction. So now I can just try this and now this looks better. So now it looks more like a fire moving here. All right, so let me just remove this keyframe here. And now what I'm going to do is on frame one, I will rotate this bone to be on, um, on 360 degrees here and then on frame 49 I will just rotate fully rotate it so it can go back so basically it's doing a full turn all right and now I will select this keyframe right click and select a cycle all right because I want this bone to continue rotating in a cycle so now you can see it will continue rotating now the only thing that is happening here is that um, this first keyframe is set to smooth so that means uh, there are some acceleration happening here so you can see this starts slowly takes more speed and then it stops slowly and actually i don't want that i want this to be linear so i will just set this keyframe to be linear so now the speed is going to be constant all right so now i have my fire kind of working here is i know it's not perfect but we can still do something else so we have the rotation working here but we can still go to the to the vector layer and actually I want you to remember this cycle ends on frame 49 so we are going to go to the vector layer and we are going to also create a cycle that ends on for on frame 49 so I will just go to frame 1 freeze the pose here so that will create keyframes for the points and then I will go to frame 49 freeze them again and now I will create a cycle for this so the points are also moving in a cycle, even when I haven't technically animated them yet, but I, they, I know they will move in a cycle, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do here is that, for instance, for instance, I don't like how the fire looks at this point. So what I'm going to do is take this leg and pull it a bit out and then a bit inside here. So. It's going to do something different there and the same for this leg i want it to start way smaller and then grow okay and probably the same for this leg so basically i want to keep the base of the of the fire a bit more consistent so the legs are not going to cut it so much all right and the last one i think it's this one and there yeah, and I can do the same with the other one. So for instance, here you can see the leg uh, is too big. So I will just decrease the size and maybe later make it bigger. 
So the same for this one. And there. And the same for this one, maybe smaller. And oops, and bigger here. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with the base of the movement. Now, with the top, maybe at some point, maybe here, I want this part of the shape to separate from the other one. So what I'm going to do is to increase the size of this leg so it will cut the shape there. So now you can see the separation happening there. And maybe I want that to happen again here. So I just move those legs there. And you can see how I am affecting the cycle there. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that. Of course you can do other things, but if I hide the 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 vectors, you can see how this is working. So let's say I'm, I'm very happy with this. So now what I can do is I will actually create a, create a background. So I will just create a new layer and let's say, um, okay, now let's say this is my background. All right. So I just created a background because I want to show you some blending modes and the blending modes, they work better if they actually have a background. So I can create a reference for the main liquid shape here. And with this reference layer, it's actually doing exactly the same as the other layer, but I can also apply some blur. So I will just apply some blur here so you can see the blur appearing there. And also I won't, I'm going to change the blending mode. So I just right click it. So maybe a screen is nice. Let me just try something else first. Yeah, I think I like a screen. So now, I have this blending mode applied there. So maybe I can duplicate this again with creating a reference and maybe I can apply more blur for this one and maybe I can apply a different blending mode. Uh, maybe this one. All right. And maybe I can even colorize this layer. I will double click it. I will click on colorize and I will change the color of this. So maybe yeah, maybe like a, da a lighter blue or maybe if you want something. Okay, let's say something more red for some reason. Okay, so now I have uh, this and I can change the alpha also. So let's say something like that. I press OK. And now this is the effect that is appearing here. All right. And then, of course, you can create another vector layer and maybe create another circle here with no stroke and then I will just take the shape, the, the color from here and then apply some blur maybe there and then apply some blending mode to whatever I think it could work. I'm not sure, maybe this one soft light. Okay. So maybe I'm not sure about the red color. Maybe it will still be blue. Yeah, I think. I think the bluish works better. Okay. But anyway, I have like this shape illuminating the ground in a way. So now you have this, this effect and this is all done with liquid shapes and then done with some effects. Um, another thing you can do with liquid shapes is that, let me just open this file here. You can also create characters with the liquid shapes. So in this case, if you look at this character moving, you can see it is going from a three quarter view to a side view, all right? And if I show you the layers of this, there is one layer for the shine that is here. There is another layer for the shade, which is this one, other layer for the eyes, and a base layer, which is the head. If I check how the head is built, you can see that actually the head is done with two circles that are blending together. And if I look at the mouth, you can see that the mouth is actually another shape that is subtracting from it. So I, that way I can go from front view to side view with this shape, right? So I will just leave it, leave the mouse he, mouth here again. And then I have some extra circles and this one is adding. So basically I just added in case I wanted to move this part of the mouth. Okay. And the same for this one. So this one is just adding and the same for this one. So in case, I don't know, the character wanted to uh, bite its its lip or something like that. I can do that, all right. And now, if you see the teeth, the tongue, and the black shape of the of behind of inside of the mouth, these are just normal shapes. 
that are behind everything. Okay, so these are just normal shapes there. All right, so now you can see it moving and you can see how it is actually working. It's just that. Uh, and then if I go to the eyes, you can see that the eyes are actually, let me just select them, are actually masked by the head. So you don't see the right eye, eye here because it's using a mask. Uh, let me just turn off the masking because I want to show you only the eyes. And here you can see that the eyes are using intersect uh, liquid shapes for the pupils and they are subtracting with the eyebrows so I can move the eyebrows in any way I want let's say something like that and then finally I have this shape that is also subtracting so if I want to close the eyes the eye or push it from the bottom I, I can do it with this all right and then finally this is just a normal shape on top all right so this is how this eyes are working so now you can see them working there and then we have the shade and actually this is a bit uh, light so I will just increase the opacity so you can see it better all right I'm not seeing the masks that's why you you are seeing the shape outside of the head but if I turn on the mask you can see this the this how the character will look all right but I just I'm just turning off the mask because I want to show you this shape is actually just a circle with two circles subtracting from it. So I just move this and now I have the shade here. So that allows me to change the direction of the light. Let me just turn the masking on. So yeah, we get that. And something similar happens with the shine. Uh, so the shine is this circle. I will change the opacity so you can see it better. The shine is this circle. And these other circles are, are just subtracting from it. So I have two at one side and two at the other side. So I can move the, the source of the light by just moving that. But that's the main idea here. So now let me just show you. Uh, I can, again, I can apply um, maybe to the shade. I can apply some blur if I want. So maybe it will be blurry now and then apply some blending mode. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Okay, let's say this one. And then for the shine, I can also apply some blur if I want, of course. If it matches with the design you have. And then we are going to apply some... Okay, maybe this one, color dot. But I will put the shine under the eyes. Alright, so now our, our character looks like that. And of course, I can animate that shade and animate the shine too. All right, so you can apply that. And here you you, you also see something that I think I didn't show you before is that you can also animate the line width and the line width is going to be combined with the shapes. So here you can see how it is being combined there. So you don't need to only use like flat strokes. You can have different, um, different line width and other thing that you can do is also apply a brush to this. So let's say I'm going to apply this brush, maybe with some size variation here. Yeah, maybe I want, yeah, this is what I want for some reason. And maybe I want to apply some line boil too. So let's let it boil at two. So now the line is doing that. All right, but you can do the, all that with liquid shapes. I'm using very simple shapes here, but you can do other stuff, uh, but just combining. So you can even try, I don't know, if I use the, um, I will try something silly here, but if I use the freehand tool, um, let me just set out of field. So let's say I will just draw that, and then I draw another one, maybe here and I just subtract from one to the other. So maybe I can make this, this some kind of a smoke that it goes down first and then it grows. Okay, so it does that. And then maybe at the beginning, the one subtracting is, uh, is a bit smaller. So maybe it is around here 
and then when this grows this one also grows like that yeah, let's say something like that and then it continue continues growing to make disappear the other one so you just make it disappear I don't know what will be the result here but you could create some kind of um, some kind of explosion maybe or something like that right this is it's not very good <laughs> but I, I just wanted to show you the possibilities of, of this and of course you can do a better job than I do but yeah let's say something like that you can always edit the points a bit more to to get a better result or you can just use the magnet tool to modify some of the stuff so maybe oops so maybe yeah something like that well it's a very bad effect but <laughs> i i hope you get the idea of it all right let me just go back to the fire because i think it ah uh, let me actually undo it because i broke it yeah this looks better to finish the tutorial thank you very much thank you very much for watching Bye.